Hey church family, hope you're well. JT here. Today we're in Psalm 122. Uh, as we first look at this psalm, it may kind of seem like an odd psalm or maybe irrelevant to our lives, but I think as we dig more into it, we're going to see that it really does have some great nuggets of application for us and, and moments of encouragement. The context for Psalm 122 is likely those within Israel who have been on a journey, a pilgrimage, and have come back. It's a psalm of David, so David likely wrote it for the people within Israel as they were coming back into the city of Jerusalem, or maybe even as they were going up to the house of the Lord. It's described as a song of ascent, which just is a song of celebration, a song of praise. And so imagine, it's almost kind of like a, a call to worship as they're coming in. They're singing these praises to God. Um, as we dig into it, Psalm 122 is kind of short, and so we're going to read it, and then I'm just going to focus on maybe a couple of the, the points of application. So here we go, Psalm 22, 122. So here we have Psalm 122. You can see the title up there. Let us go to the house of the Lord, a song of ascents of David. Verse 1. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet have been standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem built as a city that is bound firmly together, to which the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, as was decreed for Israel, to give thanks to the name of the Lord. There thrones for judgment were set, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they be secure who love you. Peace be within your walls and security within your towers. For my brothers and companions' sake, I will say, peace be with you. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your good. Now, as you can see here in verse 1, there is a desire in the psalmist to go to the house of the Lord. The psalmist is looking at the city, uh, seems and he looks at it and he sees God's faithfulness represented by the structures and the glories of that great, great city as he's been away, likely remembering all of the ways in which the Lord has provided for this nation of Israel and protected this great and sacred city. To that point, I think we can all relate to feeling that feeling of seeing things in our own lives that remind us of the Lord's faithfulness. Just a quick example from my own life is that for many years, my wife and I, um, we drove cars that were really old. It seems every other month I was in the garage having to fix something on these, these old cars. It got so bad that for almost two years, we only had one working car. Uh, and that one working car had over 300,000 miles on it, right? We were at a, that place in our marriage. Where we were really pinching pennies. And thankfully, by God's grace, we now have two working cars. And often when we get into them as a family, we'll verbally like praise God for providing them to us. Like, thank you, Lord, for these cars. Praise you. Praise God. These cars that have no spiritual significance in and of themselves still represent for us the Lord's provision and faithfulness, and it stirs our hearts to praise the Lord. And it's this same sentiment, and even more so, represented by the psalmist here in relation to the city of Jerusalem. Verse 6, as you'll notice, continues on in that direction. It says, um, and for, for those listening or for us reading, it says, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. It says in verse 7, peace be with your walls and security within your towers. Again, it's the realization that this city and the security of the city represents the prospering and safety of God's people within it. We see that the psalmist in verse 9 gives us even more clarity as to why Jerusalem is so important when they say, quote, for the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your good, end quote. It's the temple, the holy place of God that resides within the city of Jerusalem. So the psalmist realizes that it's not just that Jerusalem itself as a city is important, but it's because the Lord's house is there. His holy temple resides within those city walls. The city is special because it is where God is. As I close, be reminded that as we move into the New Testament, specifically in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16, the Apostle Paul reminds us of this beautiful new covenant reality, this change that in 1 Corinthians, Paul says, quote, don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in your midst? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy that person. For God's temple is sacred and you together are that temple. Be encouraged today that if you are in Christ Jesus, if you repent of your sin, put your faith in Jesus Christ, then the Holy Spirit actually resides in you. God, who used to reside in a temple, now has made you his temple and resides in in you. The same care that God shows towards his temple in the Old Testament is now shown towards you and me as we are his holy temple individually and collectively as the church. And in the same way, 
that he resided in his temple and now resides in us. So be encouraged, church family. You have the Holy Spirit of God residing and working in you. Trust him. Pray to him. Know that you have the power of God within yourself right at this very moment. So church, be blessed. Love you all. We'll see you tomorrow as we continue in our daily psalms.